Hello everybody, Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. It is Monday, October 23rd, 2023, and I'm so happy to have you join me here tonight for a Make It Monday. Um, it's been a couple weeks since I've been here, and I apologize for that and appreciate your patience as I work through a few things um, at home, the least of which is laryngitis, and as you can tell, I'm still a little uh, scratchy in the throat here with that. Um, I'm going to do my best to make it through this video without going into a coughing mode, but I'm really excited to be back. We've had a, a rough kind of couple weeks here at our house, and we're just getting our pieces put back together, but I am really, really happy to be back here with everyone tonight. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Like I said, my name is Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape, and I am an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. I've been making cards for um, oh, over 30 years, primarily using Stamping Up products for the last mm, 10 and a half years or so. And um, my goal in life is to just simply spread joy one card at a time. Hey, Ann, thanks for joining in. Um, I struggled to find my creativity right away and um, or in life. And when I found stamping, I found a way that I could be creative and make beautiful things and share with others around me. And that's really what my goal is <coughs> in helping people with their card making here. So tonight... Because things have been a little crazy, I am not doing the three cards like I've normally been doing. But instead, I'm sharing with you a set that is in the annual catalog, but has a supplemental piece that comes through the online exclusives. And so, um, honestly, it was the online exclusive part that got me interested more so in the stamp set. And so I want to share that with you tonight. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and flip my camera over. And start sharing that with you and then we can um, get going on making this card so let me get you into the stand we'll see how much of this I remember how to do so far I think it's going okay here Wow, I'm not even gonna mess too much with straightening this out I don't eh, maybe I have to I thought I could get by without doing it but I don't think I can we're just going to see. And I'm home alone tonight with the cat, so I can't even begin to say what they may do tonight as they join us. Pretty sure it's going to be something, though. Um, <coughs> so the stamp set that I'm featuring tonight is actually in the annual catalog. And it is the translucent florals along with the um, coordinating dies, which are also called translucent florals and these dies and stamps are found on page um, actually it's not the annual catalog <coughs> sorry I didn't have this part real well planned out I should have but um, I'll get us there hopefully I'm not off base on this okay yep translucent florals it's on page 56 in the mini catalog. And like I said, I wasn't too... I mean, it's pretty. I like it. Um, I really want to try it using some of the vellum paper because I think there we're going to get some pretty cool appearances. But in our online exclusives, which are products that are only available online, they issued a set of designer series paper that... <coughs> excuse me, coordinates with the stamp set. And it's this paper that caused me to want to get the stamps and dies to go with the paper. And so I'm working with those tonight. And the paper itself is called um, Delightful Floral. And our online exclusives are products that are only available online. Um, <coughs> excuse me, only online. They aren't in any catalogs. They're available while supplies last, but from what I'm seeing, um, these products are available for longer periods of time. I can't always promise that's what's going to happen, but um, like I said, this paper is so beautiful. I'm just going to jump in and share it with you right now. The coordinating colors for this paper, because I always like to share that too. I think this one's got quite a variety. Um, it starts with Berry Burst. 
Blackberry Bliss, which I love that color. Um, Bubble Bath, and this is a color I haven't used a lot of, but I think those three colors are very pretty together. Calypso Coral, Fresh Freesia, Lemon Lolly, and I really like this. I, I see this for summer cards. Parakeet Party, Pool Party, and then, of course, our um, Pretty Peacock. So that's, I don't know what, how many was that? Three. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, nine different colors that it coordinates with. Um, so I think that I like when the designer series paper will coordinate with lots of colors. But let me just share this with you. Um, I just love, love, love this. It is so pretty. Um, you can kind of see all the different colors that I just talked about in there. And I actually made a card using the um, Parakeet Party, which again is a color I haven't used a lot of, but this sheet really incorporates all of the colors that I just showed you. And on the back side, you've just got kind of the tie dyed version of the, um, or not tie dyed, but like salt painting of Berry Burst. And then we've got this great um, leaf background that basically pulls in the Pretty Peacock and the Party Par Parakeet Party. And then on the back side of that, again, is kind of that salty image um, of um, Pretty Peacock. And then we've got this sheet of paper, which has this just all over dainty, really dainty floral pattern. And again, this pretty much incorporates every color that I just showed you in the cardstock. And on the back side of that piece, we've got the <coughs> Calypso Coral, just kind of an all over background. And then we've got this larger image of the floral. <coughs> and again, I think you could just do some fussy cutting and cut, cut some of these images out and just use that as the focal point on your card and have some very, very pretty cards. And then, <coughs> sorry, the flip side of this is um, the, I, I wanna say bubble bath, but it's the, it is bubble bath. For some reason, I keep thinking it's bubble gum, but it's really bubble bath. Um, and then we've got another f just leafy image, which again, um, it brings in the two greens as well as a little bit of lemon lolly. And the back side of that is pool party. And then we have another all over pattern, um, kind of with a diagonal line running through it. And the back side of that is the parakeet party. So these pieces will make great background pieces, um, something that you can stamp on and your sentiment isn't gonna get lost in that or your flower, whatever you stamp on there. So let me go ahead and show you the card that I created. And then we're gonna walk through the steps to make the card. And give me a minute while I stall for time. Here is the card that I wanna share with you. I've used that all over floral and I've got the fresh freesia. I've used several of the stamped images and I've die cut them out. These are a distinctive stamp set. And I'm gonna just share a couple tips that I found when I was stamping the images. And then I've used that scallop edge die and the happy birthday sentiment. Um, these are very simple sentiments that are in here. You're the best, congratulations, happy birthday, wishing you all the happiness in the world. And what I like is this wishing you all the happiness in the world is a great stamp for the inside of the card, but it goes with congratulations. It goes with you're the best. It goes with happy birthday. So it's kind of an all in one um, sort of sentiment. And because this is just a simple typed font, it doesn't distract from the beautiful images of the distressed or the distinctive stamps that come with this. The dies that go with this will cut out um, this image, this image, this image, this, this, and this, as well as this. I don't believe these leaf pieces um, one, two, three, will totally match up just because there's more leafy things here than what the dies have, but they'll be great pieces if you want to add some depth to your flowers to die cut those. And then these are just basically petal pieces that you can layer together um, that create some of the floral images. 
<clears throat> that are used like on this card with these two different flowers and they're just coloring on vellum with some of our blend pens so <coughs> that's gonna be something fun to try here so let's go ahead and get started um, pretty basic measurements for this card and I did do the stamping and die cutting ahead of time because you don't really need to watch me do that um, the card base <coughs> Oh, excuse me, measures four and a quarter by 11. And I'm simply going to fold this over and use my bone folder to burnish the edge. And then I've got a piece of basic white that measures four by five and a quarter. That'll be on the inside of our card. <coughs> and then I have a piece of designer series paper um, and again, I'm using the same color that I used on that piece. I think it goes more like this. Um, this measures four by five and a quarter as well. And then I've taken that basic white dye. I'm gonna have to make sure I cover it. Looks like I got a little splotch on my card here. And it's not gonna come off with the erase. Oh, yes it is. Perfect. Um, I've got that die cut and then I did do slightly different colors for my flowers and we will get this card assembled so that you can see how it works and then afterwards I wanted to show you like I said a couple tricks that I learned on stamping with the distinctive stamps I haven't done a lot of that <coughs> and so I found something that worked better for me when I was stamping which kind of goes against some of what we talk about when we're teaching people how to stamp. So, um, to start with, I'm going to stamp my sentiments. I always like to do my stamping ahead of time so that it can dry and I don't have to worry about it smearing. And I find that especially helpful when I'm using darker colored inks. And since Pretty Peacock is going to be my ink of choice, um, I definitely want to make sure that I give that a little bit of time to dry and I'm just going to put this happy birthday kind of up here in the corner because most of this piece is going to get covered up with our florals. <clears throat> okay and I was debating am I going to clean my stamps off but I know myself too well I need to do that. Just so I don't set my card stuff down in front of it. Or have one of the kittens <coughs> run through it. All of which is a possibility. Alright, so I'm just going to put some adhesive on the back of my designer series paper. Today is the first day in two weeks I've actually been down in my craft studio um, creating. So it's just taking me a little bit to get back into the groove here. But... Remember with the adhesive, a light touch and that quick check mark, and that prevents it from getting all gummy and not sticking real well. So I'm going to take my designer series paper and I'm going to put it on the front. And one of the tips I learned is to kind of look at opposite corners and if they're even, the rest of the, the paper should be even too in the corners. It's just a little layout tip. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this piece on the inside of my card. <clears throat> so I'll open that up and again kind of just watch diagonal corners to make sure they're fairly even. And we'll put those down. So here we've got, like I said, wishing you all the happiness in the world. That's just such a, a simple sentiment, but it goes with um, multiple um, situations and I really like that that works so I'm going to go ahead and just use adhesive to adhere this layer to my card and I am putting this one off center left and right but top to bottom I am trying to center it as much as I can <clears throat> and then I've got my stamped images um, I found it very easy to line up my dies with these stamped images. <coughs> and 
and get a very, I like when my border's very even all the way around it, and it was quite simple to do with these dies. So don't be afraid of that. Um, they're big, but they're, they're open. And so I think it just helps being able to line it up. One of the other things, a tip that I'll give you too for lining up this image in particular, and I don't think you're gonna be able to see it on camera, but when I'm lining it up, one of the things I look for is um, the hole down here. I wanna make sure I can see that line for the stem. I wanna make sure I can see that in my die because then I know I've got that fairly centered. So I'm gonna try, um, try here to see if you can see the darker green. And that helps me know that the, I'm not sure that it's gonna show, but if I can get that green lined up as opposed to just having white in there, I know I've got a good, um, good alignment on the stem and then I can just kind of jiggle a little bit on the top to get that part lined up. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, I will show it in another video because I'm certain I'm going to be using these again. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and adhere the leaves um, just with adhesive. I will be popping up the other images. <clears throat> so I'll put that there. And then this is going to be the first piece that I lay down. And so I will use my dimensionals that I had. I had everything sitting out so I could easily grab it. I have more dimensionals. Not a problem. Or maybe it is. I even trimmed around the edges so I'd be able to use some of the border. But that's okay. I've got a brand new sheet here that I can use. So this one I'm just going to pop up um, completely on dimensionals. And sort of just put this off to the side right underneath my sentiment. And then I'm going to take this next piece. And because this is already on dimensionals, I, don't, I want it to, to rest on top. So I'm only going to put dimensionals on this one side and then I'll take just a teeny bit of adhesive along this part so that it'll stick to that without being a wonky height. Okay. And we'll put that piece right here. And now I know my stem is going to stick out just a little bit, so I will fix that when I'm all done. When I made this first card, I actually trimmed off the edge of the stem um, before I even put it together. When I was die cutting it, I didn't have it lined up quite right, so it ended up cutting the stem off. So, not a big deal, um, but I will need to do that manually now on this one. Um, and I'm going to pop this last flower up onto a dimensional too, and just kind of put that in the center, but I want to trim this line real quick just so that I don't risk it sticking out. There we go. <clears throat> and then we can pop this piece right back in there. And now we've got this gorgeous card um, all lined up, but it needs a little sparkle. So my Wink Estella is coming out. And I need to get a little of it on my paintbrush. So I'm squeezing it off onto the side here. Um, just so that it doesn't blurp out onto here. And you'll notice as I'm doing this with the Wink of Stella, it actually does cause my green to blur just a little bit, and that's okay. I don't have a problem with that look. Um, if you do, you may not want to put Wink of Stella on top of it. But like I said, I'm, I'm okay with it kind of blending that in a little bit. I don't have a problem with that. And then I'm going to add it to my flowers as well because I love Wink Estella. My sister likes to call it Stella Winka. But we all know what she's talking about when she says it.
So obviously the blending that it does shows up a lot more um, when you're in a darker color. But it's happening on the lighter tones too. And if you see me going off to the side with my pen, I'm actually dipping it into the paper where I squirted some out. Um, that way I'm not wasting it. So that's just why I kind of keep going off camera. Normally you wouldn't need to do that, but I had a blob there that I didn't want to waste. And so that's where that, that's why I just keep going off to the side here. Okay. <clears throat> that takes care of my Wink of Stella. And then last but not least, I do think it needs just a little bit more of the bling. So let's see what I've got here in the way of... Um, pretty stones and you know I think I'm just gonna go with my basic rhinestones tonight it'll kind of go with my wink of Stella so we'll grab a large one and a medium one and a small one and there we go and I didn't add any to this card but I like the difference that made so we're gonna finish this card up the same way there you go so two cards same layout different colors so it does kind of change how it looks um, I think they're both very nice cards Leaning towards this one being slightly more on the favorite side, but I'm curious which one you like better, if it's the Fresh Freesia or the Pretty Peacock. Let me know in the comments as you're looking at the cards um, and which one you like better. I will see everybody next week, hopefully with a normal voice without coughing, but we'll see what happens. And um, I thank you for taking time tonight to join me. I have a new um, stamp set that I want to use next week that is going to be a preview of a set you'll be able to buy the following week and it too is a very gorgeous um, selection of items and I'm looking forward to having some time this week where I can play with it and come up with a couple creations for you <coughs> using that suite of products so take care everybody have a great week and we will see you next week the night before Halloween take care bye bye